I knew when I started getting angry about the situation that I better start praying about it. And I felt like the Lord um, led me to Psalm 61. You know, I cried to you, O Lord, from the ends of the earth. But until that time, I need your, I need your help. Well, we want to welcome everyone to the uh, One Mission, One Movement podcast. Uh, we've got a very special uh, episode today. Special guest today uh, is Chaplain David Reynolds. And uh, this is a very, very busy man. <laughs> He's Bishop of the Capitol uh, District. He pastors a church, uh, as well as now uh, it, it, continuing as the director for our chaplaincy ministry, uh, which is now a combined uh, with the military and the uh, civilian, and so he's got he's he's a man who is uh, very busy, uh, but we are blessed in our organization to have uh, wonderful leaders uh, and people that we feel like have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And so uh, David's one of one of these individuals, and so we're going to be interviewing others uh, and introducing them to you. But today we're really glad to have you, David. Well, thank, thanks, Steve. It's a, it's an honor and a privilege just to serve alongside you and and the PCG colleagues that the Lord's put in place. Well, I wanted to ask you today, just as we kind of get started, um, uh, when did you enter the the chaplaincy? Did you kind of go kind of immediately into that, or? No, um, we were pastoring pastoring a local church, and. Um, actually had left the pastorate went in and was uh, we were working with a another pcg um, pastor as his school principal and uh, so during a summer vacation um, hope and i were actually i can remember walking through the mall in uh, dover delaware and seeing a recruiting station and I I can't say other than I felt like there was a tug on my heart. I guess I always had wondered what it would be like to do what my dad did, go in the military. So we went in, we began to ask questions. And uh, that summer, uh, I think it was 1984, um, we signed up to go in as an Air Force Reserve enlisted person. Uh, so my very first assignment after going to, to boot camp was right there in Dover, Delaware, um, as an air cargo specialist. And once I got into the, the Air Force and got into um, the routine, um, it just continued to pull on my heart that I would then proceed on to become a chaplain. So uh, within a year or two after enlisting, I transferred over to the um, chaplain candidate program, spent um, three years in the chaplain candidate program, going to seminary, um, and then being reappointed um, a few years after that as a, a reserve chaplain to start. And um, we've spent 30, 33 years in all three of the different components, um, the reserves, the National Guard as an Air National Guard chaplain, and nine years as an active duty chaplain. So um, it's been it's been quite a journey. The, the military will take you places that you never thought about going and teach you things that you never knew. <laughs> Well, within the chaplaincy, have you been actively deployed into an area, for instance, like Afghanistan or a place where, uh, uh, you know, there was conflict or what's your, what's your personal experience been like that? So my closest, um, closest area of conflict was on the back end. Um, I have never been in a setting where there have been bullets flying, um, but um, probably one of the highlights of a deployment that I've been on uh, was to um, Ramstein Air Force Base. 
And it, when I was deployed to Ramstein, my job at that time was to meet incoming and outgoing planes uh, that were carrying the wounded. And uh, they were coming from downrange from Balad and from Afghanistan and different places. And it was um, very, very eye opening. Um, and it was a very, very much an honor. Uh, they would allow the chaplain when they dropped the doors on the back of the C-17 to be the first aboard. And um, so I got to go around and pray with people and meet with them. Um, I recall not only praying with the, with, the, with the wounded and with the soldiers, but I recall one time after we went back um, to the uh, contingency operations center that one of the um, one of the male nurses that that had been on this particular mission he was he was a mess he was you know he had just seen his fill and um, I just happened to be happened to be walking by him and and um, you know he said hey chappy you got a minute and that just you know led to times of tears and prayers and you know so again it's it's being with the with the troops being with them where they're at that uh the lord opens those doors well that, that that's amazing well well all of this kind of uh leads us into our present situation uh and particularly in afghanistan the recent developments in afghanistan and uh i know that this is a challenging issue uh, for Americans from a lot of, point of points of view, and particularly for the military. But I just wanted you to reflect a little bit uh, about that uh, and kind of be chaplain for us as we're kind of looking at this and with the questions that are being raised and uh, what's actually going on, where we're going from here. I just wanted to get your reflections on where we're at in that right now. Sure. So Hope and I actually were in Texas um, last last week, um, attending some meetings there at the IMC. And Thursday, Thursday morning, we were getting ready to fly out and uh, Hope got a text on her phone. She said, oh no, there's things going on in Kabul. And so I, I turned the TV on and, um, you know, it was, it was difficult. Um, uh, I felt a, a sickness in my stomach. Um, there was, uh, the longer I watched it, the more I began to think about 9-11 um, and how I felt on that day. Um, and it just seemed like in, over the next few days as we would hear the reports and, and listen to what was going on, um, a gamut of emotions um you know went from from heartache and heart sickness to uh, questions and ultimately being angry um and when i started getting angry and people people were asking me questions uh, almost immediately i was getting texts and uh, i I knew when I started getting angry about the situation that I better start praying about it. Um, and so um, I did, and I felt like the Lord um, led me to Psalm 61, where it said, um, you know, I cry to you, O Lord, from the ends of the earth, when my heart is overwhelmed, uh, lead me to the rock. I desire to dwell in your tent forever. And I thought, Lord, that's really what I desire is to be in your tent. But until that time, I need your, I need your help so that I can, so I can speak to others. And, um, and he's been faithful. I have had contact with two of our PCG chaplains that are literally in the thick of it in the Middle East. Um, both of them are, are, are physically well, uh, but I can tell you the same kind of emotions that I just described, I'm being transparent with you, the same 
kind of emotions that I've uh, described, um, I could hear it in their voices. Um, military people are, are, are trained from the beginning, uh, from the time that they go to, uh, to basic training, they're, they're trained that during the fog and friction of war, you need to keep focused. You, you can't be thinking about other things. You need to keep focused. And, and so I know our chaplains uh, that I talk to, they're focused and they're, they're accomplishing the mission that the military has set before them, along with all of the other uh, troops that are doing the mission that the military asks them to do, but they are human beings. And at some point, they're going to need to debrief. They're going to need to decompress. And, um, and our chaplains will have the opportunity to be that ear and have that presence there where they can, they can help these uh, wounded warriors. Um, decompress. When I say wounded warriors, I don't mean just those that are physically wounded. But, you know, as I watch those pictures um, in Afghanistan and any of those young men and women that served on that front line saw things that they're not going to soon forget. And um, they're going to need they're going to need chaplains. They're going to need um, counselors. Uh, they're going to need family. Um, they're going to need the VA, uh, and I thank God that we have very qualified VA chaplains in our PCG family that um, they know these emotions, they see these emotions, and they, they, are doing, they will do their best to help our, our troops uh, recover and heal. Yes, yes. It's good to have your visceral reaction to it. It frames it in that human role because we know the military. We know, in, in the sense that there's a job to do. We realize that people have to stay focused in those. But I, I think it helps the rest of us realize that all the people that are directly involved in that, um, <clears throat> no matter no matter what the task is, they're human beings. And I know I, I doubt seriously if there are very many ministers who have not had an opportunity to minister to. A veteran uh, that has come back from conflict, uh, either in Desert Storm or Afghanistan or other conflicts, and I know that the, the tremendous challenges. Many of them were physically wounded, and and uh, of course they've recovered from that. As, you know, but it's scars uh, emotionally, and it's the challenge as a human being, and so. I really, I really admire the chaplaincy because I've dealt with some of those individuals that have come back, and uh, uh, you know, uh, the trauma, and so to be on the front lines of it. So we're certainly praying for you guys. What else do you think, uh, as a response uh, to this, what might be something that that our constituency could do uh, to 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 help out in in this situation? Well, uh, recently I had one of our ministers write me a letter and ask me, this was before Afghanistan even happened. He wrote me a letter um, and he had said something about the suicide rate among veterans. And uh, the number that he used was 22 veterans a day um, take their own lives by suicide. And he asked me, you know, what what could he do to help? And he began to tell me about what his line of work was and that he was retired, but he really wanted to help. So I, I gave him again the name of one of our VA chaplains that have, have uh, a vast amount of experience. And I know there are programs, community programs that the VA um, it literally would invite any of our ministers or any volunteers from the PCG to join these um, outreach programs. Well, this, um, this um, minister that had contacted me, he had a side business that um, he made logos for shirts and hats and 
different things. And he just sent to me in the mail a hat that says 22 on it and Jesus underneath it. And he said, I'm going to start making these hats and wearing the hats and giving the hats out in hopes that people will ask me, well, what's 22 Jesus mean? And I will be able to tell them about 22 veterans every day are taking their own life. And so, there, you know, um, I was just talking with another minister the other day that um, I said, you know, Jesus talked about giving cups of cold water in his name, that that is ministry. It, it doesn't have to be behind a pulpit. It doesn't have to be in a church. It can be wherever that you serve a certain kind of population that Jesus will be present and um, and miracles and things that we don't even dream about um, can happen. So I, I think the VA is a huge um, opportunity for people that have a heart for military members or for veterans to connect up with. And then um, and many of our uh, larger bases, such as Fort Bragg and um, Fort Jackson and some of the other large bases, Fort Hood, um, that, that have a huge military population, those pastors that are in proximity to those large bases, um, they can connect up too. They can connect up with the local chap chapel and, and just ask the question, what can our congregation do to serve? What, what can we do? Can, can we give out cold cups of water? Um, so there's, there's definitely opportunities besides prayer. Prayer, of course, is fundamental, but, but uh, missions of mercy and service that, um, that someone with a heart um, can find an outlet. Excellent. But I think it's been really good because it really reminds us uh, of the forgotten casualties of war. Uh, you know that those that are killed in action were wounded in action, but certainly uh, those that come back and uh, <clears throat> suicides are tremendously tragic. My experience has been that anybody who's been in combat or been exposed to that frontline action is a casualty <laughs> to some extent. There's just a lot that uh, they see and that they experience. And uh, I think as a nation, I certainly, and for us, we're, we're blessed in the Pentecostal Church of God to have a strong chaplaincy ministry. And with your leadership, it continues to grow stronger. And so I don't want us to take that for granted. Uh, that's been a blessing of the Lord. That's been the dedication of a lot of people over the years. Uh, and it's just getting stronger. And it proves to be, again, in the face of what we're seeing now, one of the most crucial pieces of ministry uh, that, our, that our organization is involved in and uh, one mission and so we it's one mission no matter no matter where you're serving no matter in what capacity uh everything is interconnected and we all have an opportunity to make a difference and with bishop's leadership that's what we you know we're dedicating again to let's let's make the biggest impact we can for eternity so so it's good well this is this has been great today and uh, I, 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 I always enjoy visiting with you as a friend, so that, that's good. And I thought, well, you know what? We should take this show on the road. <laughs> We've talked a few times, and so I thought it would be really good. So, well, I'm going <clears> to <throat> ask you today, as we're kind of wrapping this up, to, uh, to lead us in prayer uh, and uh, as a response to certainly uh, the immediate crisis that we see in Afghanistan and then uh, just allow the Holy Spirit to lead you today, but just to kind of pray and uh, kind of bring this to uh, to the Lord today. Amen. Okay, sure. Lord, we humble our hearts before you. We are so thankful that uh, you have saved us, Lord, cleansed us, Lord, and called us, Lord. We are we are grateful. We thank you for the leadership of the PCG and the mission that is flowing out of the leadership's heart, Lord. We, we come alongside gratefully 
and uh, do that that, that uh, you are directing. Lord, this has uh, been a very difficult, not just a difficult week, but it's been a, a continually difficult year, not only for um, our military members, but uh, for our nation. And we need we need your presence, O oh Lord. Uh, I I recall um, in our general assembly uh, the words that were spoken when when you show up, Lord, uh, things become holy. And so I pray, O oh Jesus, that you would show up in the hearts of your people, sanctify us for service, Lord show up in the, um, the things that our nation is facing. Lord, we, we need you um, more than anything else. We need you to, to show up in our, our uh, legislative body and our executive body, Lord. We need you to show up, Lord, in the leadership of our land. Um, I'm asking, Father, that you would continually have patience with us, forgive us where we err, O oh Lord, strengthen us, Holy Spirit, give us wisdom, and insight, and show us the paths that you desire us to walk upon. I do pray a special prayer, Lord, for our chaplains and those that they will be serving, Lord. Lord, I ask you to show up in our chaplains' lives, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Help them, Lord, uh, to be not only a caregiver, but one who is a catalyst of healing, O oh Lord Jesus. And I do ask too, Lord, that those caregivers would find their place of care and respite, Lord, that they might be renewed and might be strengthened. I thank you for this time that Steve and I have been able to share together today and and would ask that uh, you would use this time as a time of blessing and encouragement. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to thank everyone for tuning in. It's been a really uh, special time for us and uh, we want to bring more and more unique content uh, to the podcast so we appreciate your support. Just encourage everyone to like uh, today's episode, uh, share it with as many people as you can, and please subscribe. Uh, and we're, we're working to bring unique content like this, which is right on the cutting edge of what's, what's going on in our movement, but more importantly, the mission of our church and uh, for us to come into unity increasingly as we con connect with those that are involved in all the various aspects of ministry. David, I wanna thank you again for being with us and taking the time today. It's been a real pleasure, my friend. And uh, every time I get to visit with you is great. So I've really enjoyed it today and I appreciate you spending time with us. Likewise, likewise, Steve. I appreciate your spirit and what the Lord's doing in your heart and through you. And we're praying for you guys and for the chaplaincy, for their families. And uh, we're, we'll get more information about as to uh, how people can get involved and uh, try to help people really connect and make that. good to talk to you tell hope we said hey and uh we'll uh we'll talk to you soon thank you for listening to the one mission one movement podcast this podcast is sponsored by the pentecostal church of god which is a body of believers in nearly 70 nations around the world so we certainly invite you to join the movement by visiting our website at pcg.org but more importantly, we want to inspire you to pursue God's presence, contend for mission, and grow the church. So if you liked today's episode and you're excited about more to come, be sure to like, share, and click the subscribe button for more updates. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.